I'm going to say good evening, everyone. I know um, normally I do this in the morning, but uh, all of a sudden I'm getting ready to do Doc V's live. I do a live on his uh, Transform Your Life Challenge twice a week. And I'm doing one at 8.30, and I realized I never did my one for my personal page today. So I'll do a quick one before I go live on his page at 8.30. And um, I actually researched it this morning, but then I went and did some essential shopping and got a walk-in, and I totally forgot to go live. Um, how did I do that after 200 days? But what happened is I, I was, I don't even remember where I heard it. I was hearing something where they were talking about depression and they were talking about causes between behind depression and anxiety that were not related to all the things that we normally hear are the reasons behind stress and anxiety. And I thought I would share this because it, it kind of surprised me, but it was interesting to me because a lot of the things that it talks about were issues that I was dealing with pre-surgical. I don't deal with them now, but pre-surgical I did. And this was an article from, it was a study by BMC Psychiatry where they followed 115 people with depression for six months. And this article actually, who started it? Um, but what they did is they found eight causes behind anxiety and depression. And they said that Many doctors jumped to, to, to prescribe antidepressants, but what ended up happening is that they've been looking at other underlying causes, and this is what really surprised me, because a lot with um, bariatric surgery have some of these issues come up. And what really surprised me um, is that one of the very first things they talked about as being a cause for anxiety and depression that they're finding through new studies is that your B12 levels are low. And any of us that have had bariatric surgery know that they monitor our B12 and most of us are supplementing. Hi, Kate. Most of us are supplementing B12 at the very beginning of our journey um, because we do tend to have issues with B12. And B12 is uh, one of those vitamins that is necessary for the communication to go through your, um, from your brain to your gut. And what they're finding is a lot of connections between the brain and the gut. And they're also finding connections between the vitamins that help the systems work to keep the communication working smoothly. And that, this really surprised me because I, I guess I never realized anxiety could be connected to like low levels of vitamins. Well, hello, hello, Miss Kate. Um, so B12 is the number one thing they're talking about, and they've been doing studies that B12 can cause people to have depression and anxiety. Um, we know B12 is found in animal products, and we know B12 is needed to make red blood cells, and red blood cells are what moves oxygen through our uh, bloodstream. And I did struggle with that for a period of years. Um, then number two is thyroid issues can be to blame. And I, I didn't realize that could be connected to depression and anxiety also. So they're saying, you know, like sometimes if you're getting to a point where they're, yeah, and that was me for the first few years of uh, surgery, they monitor it and I do take it, but not as much. I used to have to take like a thousand milligrams, but, but I don't need that anymore. But then the, th the next thing they talked about was like thyroid and your thyroid can also be a cause. They said the thyroid um, is affected from like stress and diet and environmental, and you can get over and underactive thyroid. But what happens is a study found that 60% of patients with hypothyroidism reported symptoms of depression, while 63% reported symptoms of anxiety. So they're seeing some kind of a link there, and they're wondering if there's a connection between thyroid. Now, gut health, um, my goddaughter's mom is really, really big on gut health, and she thinks there's a lot of connections to the body on gut health. So I'm going to look at more of that later and talk to her about it because she's been studying nutrition to help her son. Her young son is um, has a few challenges that she works with him on diet. My niece also controls pain by diet. Um, and what they were saying is that uh, there's something called the MIRNA, and this actually is connected to microbiota that's in the gut. And I'm saying all the words I don't, I'm not medical. These are just things I read in an article. But it was interesting that these different organisms in your gut can be impacted by the other items because the connection between your, bra your brain and your gut is not a one-way street. It's a bi-directional superhighway. And they're discovering that there are levels of this M, small MI, then capital RNA, that 
were altered in mice without gut bacteria. So they were looking at the different gut bacteria and how it was affecting this, this miRNA that needed to do the communication between the brain and the gut. So that's another thing that it's just amazing what we're learning nowadays. I better watch my time because I know I have to go live and dock these at 8.30. Um, but uh, then the next one they talked about, number four is iron deficient. And Kate was just mentioning she's iron deficient. Yeah, leaky gut. I'm going to have to check on that. And I bet Jennifer's done a lot of search on that too. Because it just blows me away. But I never connected that all these, and I should have connected, but all these medical conditions can go can be attributed to anxiety and stress. And the reason it kind of attributed to me is I went through a period of 10 years that were the worst possible years of my entire career. And I've always been an over overachiever. And what ended up happening is when I went through these 10 rough years where everything felt horrible to me, I was going through the medical conditions where I was getting iron infusions and stuff like that. Well, everything they're talking about in this article, almost everything, was something that I was dealing with at the time. So I'm wondering if all those feelings of everything being terrible may have been attributed to some of these other things that I didn't realize had any connection to how I may have been feeling to the outside world. So I thought it was really worth looking into because the fifth item that they're talking about is they're talking about vitamin D. And vitamin D is something that a lot of us that are in the colder communities, they say probably up to about 50% of us have issues with vitamin D because we don't, if we work all day in, in an office, we don't see the sun. And um, they say 42% of Americans have a vitamin D deficiency. That's been linked back and that just blew me away. I was shocked about that. Um, number six, they were talking about unstable blood sugar. And any of us who were facing bariatric sugar Bariatric surgery had unstable blood sugar because, at least in my case, I mean, I was eating foods that weren't healthy for me. I could even feel in my body that I would have a spike and then a dip. So if you combine that with, like even Kate was saying, if you combine it with iron and vitamin D, you have unstable blood sugar, you have um, whatever the first one was. I don't even remember the first one now. But if I had the, the gut issues, the B12 issues, and I had every single one of those issues, and now it makes me wonder if everything that I thought was going wrong in, wrong in my life was a lot to do with medical conditions more than feel, you know, that there were other issues going on. My functional medication doctor told me about leaky gut. I think she's correct about it. Big part of my problem. I, I And it's amazing. I mean, and I, and you know what, leaky gut, I did read something in these articles and I'll look it up more because I'm going to talk about this the next few days. But they were talking about, I think it might have been connected to that miRNA and there's certain vitamins and nutrients needed like the B12 and being careful with um, alcohol and and certain certain of these these uh, vitamins, if you're deficient in them, they don't allow the walls to be as thick as they're supposed to be, which would kind of be make me think that without being medical and without doing the research, that leaky gut that I've heard a lot about lately, are there are there going to be some connections to it? Because when it, I mean. They can give you a prescription try to try to make you feel better if you're anxious or depressed, but I think most of us would love to overcome the problem completely. If it's a medical condition, we don't want it to bury it underneath something else. You know, we may need a medication to get us over the rough spot, but, but if we can fix parts of our body, those of us who've had bariatric surgery want it to be fixed. So learning and understanding more about this would make it easier. Um, and then they, the last item they said that can cause depression and anxiety is probably one that most of us have already considered, and it's the it's in your genes. A study of 460,000 people in Nature Genetics and 23andMe discovered there are 15 regions of the human gen genome associated with the risk of major depression. So I guess what I'm really I mean, I don't want anybody to have any of these illnesses or anxieties, but what I'm really excited about is that they're looking at it from more of a, and, and I know Kate is, is into this and with her holistic medicine doctor, and I may have said that wrong, but looking at what ways we can improve our health through what we're eating and drinking. Um, the idea that anxiety and depression can come from B level, B12 levels being low. It can come from thyroid issues being hyper or the hyper, hypothyroidism is the one that they talked about, but there's also hyperthyroidism, which can also be 
uh, attributable. Then it's in your gut, leaky gut, like Kate was talking about, and that they were saying in mice when they removed the bacteria, there were links between anxiety and depression that they were seeing in mice, but they're doing continued research. If you're iron deficient, that's another thing. And a lot of us deal with these issues. Lacking in vitamin D, and a lot of us, at least here in these northern states, have dealt with that. Unstable blood sugar, that's another thing with the overweight community. Alcohol, we know alcohol causes all kinds of fun and then payment later, and then in your genes. So it's really kind of interesting to me that I want to look into this more. It really makes me wonder if I, I could have done something better for myself sooner. The past is gone, I can't change it, but I can learn from it so that I can put tools into play going forward so that I don't have medical conditions and issues. It's learning how to move through the emotional response. Positive toxicity is very true, my point of view anyways. Yeah, and I, it's just worth learning. I mean, I spent so much time this past five years learning about my body and trying to live healthier and trying to respect all the damage that may have been done by being overweight, by being healthier and being more aware of how I'm reacting to things. But it just really blew me away, and I didn't realize that... Um, we could have anxiety and depression, and it really kind of took me back to that period in time because I had a hemoglobin that hung around a seven for almost five years, and I had a lot, a lot of treatments at that time. And I can remember how horrible everything in life felt, and now I'm wondering if it was attributable to being at that time low on B12, low on vitamin D, low on, I mean, I was low on almost everything they listed here, and I'm like, wow, there might have been other things I could have been doing to help myself, but at that time, nobody really talked about this. But I guess I'll let everybody go, because I'm due over in the Doc V Transform Your Life Challenge, but um, yeah, deal with it, yeah, and yeah, instead of just kind of and that's what I'm trying to do like with this journey is I want to dig in, learn, understand. And then, you know, my doctor, at least I've got a great medical team because when I ask them questions and I want to research it or I found that somebody's talking about something, they're really good about digging in and helping me to understand how it could impact me because I want to do the things to properly fuel my body. If I've done the repairs to try to lose the weight, I want to have as healthy of a body as I can. But I will talk to you guys. Some of you I may see in the Transform Your Life and others I'll see tomorrow morning. And maybe tomorrow I'll finally be on at the right time. I totally forgot about this page. I got involved in everything else. But have a beautiful, beautiful night. And I'm headed over to Doc V's forum now. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful night. And stay healthy. And maybe have a vitamin check just to see where you're at so that you can make adjustments if you need it. Thank you.